I'm not interested. How to handle this objection like a pro at the early stages of discovery. You call to a lead, you start explaining what it is you do, and then suddenly they interrupt you with this objection. I'm not interested. In sales, this is one of the most disheartening and frequent things you can hear. However, it's life-changing if you can consistently get past this objection. By overcoming it, you'll take a big step towards building a rapport with your lead, qualifying them, and exploring a business opportunity together. This could also be a gatekeeper who doesn't want you to get through. The first thing you should do is try to find out their situation. Are they able to listen? Are they too distracted by what is going on? Should they have said, I can't talk right now? The best weapon to drive a conversation is to ask a question. And the best tactic is to be honest from the beginning. I'm sorry, you're not interested in what? In whatever you're selling. I wouldn't be interested either, especially if I didn't know what this was about. I only have one question to ask you to find out if this would really be relevant to you or not. Indicate that you want to take as little of the time as possible. Get to the point quickly. Ask a question that allows you and the lead to find out if the main value of your business matters to them at all. Let's use Pipedrive as an example. But remember, every salesperson, no matter what they're selling, can benefit from this approach. Hopefully, this is the next thing you'll hear. Okay, what's the question? When you think about your salespeople, do you feel they are as focused as they should be on generating more leads and converting them to new customers? Did you notice the pause? This question is all about pacing. It can't be asked too quickly, but it can't be too slow either. A measured mini pause in the middle of a sentence encourages the lead to think about their salespeople. Here, you're connecting the main value of what you offer to the main value that every business customer cares about, revenue. It's best done in a framework of a closed question which elicits either a, an affirmative or a negative response. If that short answer is affirmative, they've also revealed the direction of their interest. I think they're doing quite a good job, but in an ideal world, yes, they could be more focused. There's always room for improvement. That's actually the reason I wanted to talk to you. When we've rolled out our solutions with customers, we've seen that their whole sales team becomes more focused on generating prospects and converting them to customers. Now, it's hard to predict without a discussion if this would happen in your team as well, but it is what I'm really curious to find out with you. If you're open to it, then this is what I propose. Let's take 20 to 30 minutes. I can come to your office and we can see pretty quickly if we have something you're interested in or if we should just stop right there. What do you think? Yeah, sure, um, whatever, let's try to meet. You do have to use your judgment. Does it sound like the lead is truly interested or are they just accepting a meeting to get off the call? If it's the latter, you want to reaffirm that the meeting is definitely worth their time. Let's assume that our approach works and your lead is curious enough to meet. In order to get the commitment to the next step, offer a few time ranges. Fantastic. Listen, if not anything else, my goal is to make this a valuable conversation. I have three times when I'm available next week, Tuesday between 1 and 4, Wednesday between 3 and 5, and Friday morning until noon. Which would work best for you? There is a way to navigate a conversation between you and a lead from not interested to an agreement to schedule a 20 to 30 minute meeting. It's important to practice running this dialogue though, because tapping into a lead's natural curiosity won't necessarily always end with the same results. Luckily, our natural curiosity is very often the starting point of something great, something that otherwise wouldn't have happened at all. If you want to find out more about how to tackle common objections you're likely to face in sales, you can read more about it in our blog right now.